We used to have what we called the express buses. Uh, for people that were going long distances from the suburbs to downtown, they can get on an express bus that stopped much less frequently, but would take half the time to get there. And so most of us would go to one of those transfer points and switch to the express buses. Uh, as the city gets bigger and the density goes up, it seems to me that both east, west, and north, south, we're going to need some type of express relief. Otherwise, you're sitting an hour in a subway system. Uh, is That's absolutely right. New York City, as you may know, has a huge network of express buses, even with their huge commuter rail and subway network. Yeah, it's and popular in Europe too. They, they cost a couple of bucks more, but it's very limited stops and goes right into central Manhattan and so on. And I think you're absolutely right. The, the problem here is we are a parsimoniously planned <laughs> British outpost, and our street system is lousy. They're narrow, they're discontinuous. And I don't know how you find room for the buses, but the idea is great. I mean, there, is pl there are plans for shoulder operation of express buses on the Don Valley Parkway, for example. There are things that could be done. So my, an the answer, my answer would be absolutely, definitely yes. Could we, could, could we change some of the streets to one way, like in New York? I wish we could. There's a tremendous aversion to one-way streets here. They have the idea that one-way streets uh, ruin the urban design and ruin the vitality of the streets. I haven't noticed uh, Madison or, or Fifth Avenue in New York losing any of their vitality. <laughs> I remember when they were two-way streets and they're all one-way streets, they work like a charm. Why don't you, why don't you chair the questions? Yeah. Yes. Is there a question up there? Sure. I was wondering if you can comment on the relation between kind of having a um, upfront funding plan um, versus having all of these kind of like you show the history of kind of segmented plans, right? It didn't seem like there was much flow from one to the other, and I was wondering if that's a function of how how capital funding is uh, assessed. Well, it's not assessed very well. I, this is not my particular area of uh, familiarity or expertise or whatever, but uh, it's basically uh, municipal decisions. Uh, municipal governments change every four years, and uh, sometimes the personnel changes. And we have no senior governmental level that is guiding this long term, as Ms. Uh, Roger Mary said, and it's, that's, that's the problem. That's one of the problems. The, uh, the whole method of funding both operations and capital is very segmented and intimate. And there's, there's really no, no long term. There are plenty of long term visions, but they're on paper. You're, you're right. You're absolutely right. Yes? You mean to, to recreate that integrated system? Yeah, for a loop from Montana. Is it possible now with better technology and I doubt it. First of all, there are four legs going into St. George Station now, into the downtown section. Before, it was just the three, because there was no uh, line north of north of Lure. So it, it's a much more complicated situation. I, I think that there have to be a lot more track changes and. Uh, again, this is uh, the, the details of operation, and I think our next people will probably know a lot more about that than I. But I would tend to doubt that. The, uh, it, there will be improvements in, tech, in uh, capacity. You, you sort of breathe a bit of a fresh air when you get on those new subway cars. With their openness, and you can spread around them and load them more efficiently. And there will be some great, uh, some, some welcome relief. but. Because of the niggardly design of the stations, there's going to be a limit to how much more capacity you can get from the new signals and the new trains. And as far as re reinventing the uh, integrated system, the only way to do that, in my mind, would be to build that third leg which was missing. We did have, we, when I say we, it's my firm, and I had a plan years ago for extending the Spadina subway south on Spadina and looping around the Union Station, and that becomes the U. And then the university line could be the uh, integrated one-way, uh, integrated two-way uh, extension into the downtown. So you'd have the three legs. I think the secret is having three, that uh, six tracks instead of the four we now have. 
there are eight tracks approaching four tracks. So no wonder the downtown loop is jammed to pieces. So I guess the short answer to your question is probably not. Okay, so maybe uh, two, possibly three more questions. Sure. Uh, anybody else? Or, or anybody? Yes. It was a, the first phase was a very short subway, a full conventional subway from Eglinton West Station to um, what they then called the City of York Center, which was at Black Creek Drive and Eglinton, which of course has not been built and probably won't be. That's, that's near where the Mount Dennis Station of the present Crosstown Line is to be, uh, where the yards are and so on, and there is a community center going in and so on. But that, that was the first phase, and it was eventually extended. It was supposed to go to the airport, just like the present line was supposed to go to the airport. But it's doubtful it will happen, and maybe in the lifetime of you young folks it might, but certainly not in mine. But it was a full subway, but a very short one. But they started doing some of the building. Nearly $100 million, as I understand it, was spent. They were working. The tunnels were being dug from Park, Old Park Road, which is uh, east of Angleton West, to around Marley Avenue, which is west. The decking was already on top of the street, and they had laid all the um, uh, piles and uh, had uh, moved all the utilities. There was a lot of work. And they had begun work on the connecting tracks to the Spadina subway. I remember seeing them diverging from the north. And that was all filled in and abandoned. Like this oh yeah, there was a lot of work done. Yeah. yeah, they built that in connect at the same time as the Shepherd Line, and of course, thanks to certain political pressures, the wrong line won. Yes, uh, and in that diagram there, your the left side of your U is that Georgetown line. Yeah. Uh, does it matter in your model whether it's GO or TTC that runs that line? As long as there's fair integration, it couldn't matter if uh, uh, Joe right. Schmo could run it. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. And of course, you'd, you'd need additional stations. Yes, yes. You know, yes. At, at, at least at the major concession roads, like St. Clair and yeah, certainly you're, you're, you're just showing the interchange stations. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks. How do you get your book? How do you get a copy of your book? Well, it's hopefully coming out in May, and it will be available. Net this is the foundation the publisher. They don't usually charge for their publications. You know, it's a, it's a <laughs> urban studies, uh, especially uh, it's like a nonprofit foundation. <clears throat> so it should be readily available. I don't know exactly the details, but uh, it'll be it'll be uh, announced. And that's the title. The title. That's the title. That's going to be the title. Maybe one one more question. I see there's uh, at the very end there. Yes. Yeah, hi. Um, so your presentation You'll never build consensus, ever, ever, ever. <laughs> well, you, I'm sure you've heard of uh, the, uh, the man who uh, rebuilt Paris in the, eighth, in the 19th century. He was a benevolent dictator, Baron Haussmann, and Paris is now the most visited city in the world and universally admired for its beauty and everything else. And sometimes you've got to put your foot down, put the gavel down, and build a network and people will conform. You cannot satisfy 
everybody or even half of everybody. Everybody, as you said, has their own desires and their own ideas. And it's, it's just an impossibility. Not when you're building uh, something that costs $200 million or more per kilometer. You, you just can't keep on changing your mind halfway through as has been happening the last two or three years worse than ever. Can't be done. So uh, not everybody is going to be satisfied. And you're, I mean, the, we've been told we're going to have conversations. If I hear that word one more time. Adult conversations. Adult conversations. <laughs> You can have as many conversations as you like, but at some point you've got to say, fine, that's it. You know, there's, there's nothing perfect about the original subways that were built here, but it was a damn good service for several years. It served the city very, very well. There were mistakes made, for sure. But it, it's just, at some point you've got to say, enough with the conversations. We've talked it to death. We've planned it to death. Let's do this whatever this is. So thank you very much. Uh,